going into the meeting, w were you on the hawkish side? Some say that maybe another hawk might have emerged with Kristen Forbes. W w were you on the hawkish side or were you on the neutral or dovish side? And where do you stand now? I think there's a, there was an expectation going on to the meeting that there will be some hawkish rhetoric coming out. And, and we, I think we got that in terms of the discussion on wages that you, you just mentioned. I think what the market and certainly what Sterling reacted to was the lack of a, an additional vote for a hike from, from Saunders. Mm. Um, what we found most interesting was that commentary on wage inflation. If we take a step back and look across most central banks over the last two to three years, a lot of them have been premature in their forecasts and forecasting an acceleration in wage inflation. Uh, we saw the Royal Bank of New Zealand overnight uh, again have a dovish statement talking about the global phenomenon of a lack of wage inflation and it feels like Governor Carney's a little bit removed from that global dynamic of very, very subdued wage inflation. That's a polite way of putting it. Danny Blanchefau was, it, was a bit more harsh earlier, Vonnie. Yeah, and I'm just curious if maybe he's factoring in the potential for lower corporate taxes if indeed, as it looks likely, Theresa May wins with a very big mandate to govern and, and change all sorts of things. Uh, potentially the, the corporate tax uh, debate or potential changes will have an impact. I think one potential angle to argue for higher wage, wage inflation would be a drop off in the participation rate that we've seen and was shown in the inflation report this morning, uh, although it is from a quite a high level. I think what we tend to look at more closely is the debate between uses of capital and uses of labour and indeed there are some questions in the press conference about the secular trends of automation and the downward impact they have on wages over the longer term. And I think that's something that will probably happen quicker than a lot of economists will anticipate. And we've seen that over the past two, three years with introduction of automation in processes uh, in factories happening much quicker than people anticipated a few years ago. Mark, how much are geopolitical and macro concerns weighing what you do at JP Morgan right now as opposed to fundamentals? Uh, well, in terms of the, let's take uh, the US Treasury yields as an example and the, how that's behaved over the last two to three months, there have been aspects of, we call them kind of global dynamics. So there can be behavior of other central banks in pulling down the term premium component of US Treasury yields. And again, we see the geopolitical aspect playing an important role as well. It's harder to isolate the impact on Treasury yields that that's had over the last two months. Uh, we see the ongoing uh, discussion at the moment about the ability of, of Korea to develop nuclear weapons. I think that plays a, a part, but probably not as important a part as ECB policy, BOJ policy, at pulling down those longer yields through that term premium component.